The sky is falling, but it's a beautiful shade of blue. Let me tell you, five more minutes, please. I'm pretty close. We're talking about Killjoys, season five, episode seven. No, we can't. Oh my God, I can't believe we're so far into the season. We have an amazing special guest with Pre on the line with us. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz I'm just Ooh, a poor Cash. wayfaring stranger. Guys, there is a reason why we're playing this song. I think uh, I think our guest may know, but we are here talking about season five, episode seven of Killjoys here at the AfterBuzz TV Killjoys After Show. Cherchez la beat. Bonjour, mes amis. How do I pronounce this? Cherchez la bitch? Cherchez la... Help, <laughs> help me out. I need help. I'm going to cut to our, our guests when we're, when we're ready. But guys, we're we're breaking it down. We have a lot to cover today. We're going to talk about Pre, Pre and General. We're going to talk about Pre and Zeph, Pre and Garrett. The Klein update. Davin and Dutch have some stuff going on where we get some more like meaty relationship yeah. juice. Da, uh, Dutch and Johnny have a little bit. And then we got to go over the plan for Team Awesome, the plan for Team Warlord, which we're going to call it aptly, which is uh, Tour and Zeph and Pre. And I guess Garrett's going to be included in that. Calvert's backstory, Fancy Feast. Fancy, my hero. And of course, the update on Lucy. Uh, I'm joined as always by my co-panelist, Cherry Davis. Hey, everybody. Love you. Love Killjoys. Mwah. And my name is Stephen Lemieux. And let's go ahead and get to our guest. You've seen him tending bar. You've seen him destroying worlds. You've seen him with the gigantic mane of golden hair. And now in this episode, being the head of the rack, we have pre a.k.a. Tom Allison, on the line. Ooh. Hi, you guys. Hi. <laughs> I'm filled with joy. What a beautiful smile. You're so handsome. I it's all like It took me two hours to set this up. <laughs> well, mm. thank you for doing it. Uh, you had some great lines this episode. You had some great one-liners jumping out the gate. Uh, I'm. Did you, you just watched the episode recently on Friday, right, Tom, with us? I did, yeah. Perfect. I want to know, we're going to go through our overall thoughts really quick, and we'll end on you because I'd love to hear your favorite moments this episode and kind of what you thought of it overall for your character. But Cherry, what did you think of this char this episode overall? I thought it was a great episode as we're closing out the season. We were getting more backstory of what's going on with Zeph. We're seeing the relationship she has with... Uh, Pre, we see Pre's relationships with everybody, and of course, surprise hero. I was really worried that they were gonna kill my boy toy Fancy, and I wouldn't have my little threesome with Fancy and Pre. But it looks like I will be having that for the rest of the episodes. Thank you. So Thank Dutch you. Johnny and Davin have to be together, and Fancy Pre and Cherry have to be together. Yes. So all sorts of thruples going on up in this B. Fair enough. Uh, you know, I watched the episode and I didn't really like it too much. And then I thought about it and I liked it a lot more. Um, we've been we've been teeing up for this final season to have like all guns blazing. And this episode was more of like a calm before the storm, I felt. But then when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Like, this is probably going to be the last episode where we have like Team Awesome Force and everyone just kind of doing like a solid Killjoys episode. Like this is the last, like let's get into these weird, this weird situation where we're kind of undercover and we have to be goofy and stuff. It was the, I feel like it's gonna be like the last time where thing the stakes don't feel ridiculous. And you get to enjoy just some brevity in moments. We, with Pre making fun of, cause if Pre was super serious, then the episode would have a very different vibe to it. But Pre kind of said it best. It's like, sky's still falling. I've seen worse. You know, like, this is just kind of how it is. If some bitch with a bad case of PMS is going to come after us, what am I going to do? He's a warlord. So I actually, I, I, I actually liked it a lot more once I thought about it because, you know, this this is the this kind of episode is the reason we fell in love with the show in the first place because it was the most season one reminiscent. Right. And you have to get all the players together. They are across the galaxy. And yeah. I really like the tie-in, um, hearkening back to some of the old style, the old episode from the first seasons. 
yeah, we got the band back together. We solved a few problems of like, let's not spend three episodes figuring out where the lady's main body is. We're going to do it this way. We're going to introduce Calvert, which we already liked before, but now we know Calvert's back. And we're like, okay, cool. We got another team member. We killed Pip last season, so let's get another team member. The only unfortunate thing about Calvert is they can't give her another season. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. So. Yeah. What were your what were your overall thoughts on, on this episode? Obviously, you have a very different perspective than us. Sure. I loved it. I loved it on the read of it. I could feel everyone having such a good time and putting it together. Um, and I knew I'd have this time with um, Kelly and with Patrick. And, and those guys are hilarious. So we had such a good time filming it. And also, we knew that we were always aware of when you guys see it, how much fun you're going to have. And we were sort of going, okay, they'll love that. I think they'll love that. I wonder what they'll think of that. So it's it's this anticipation for us of, of seeing what you see when you see it. So in good or bad, it's all interesting to us. I loved when you had to carry Zeph. How oh was that sort of getting it together? I mean, she looks like she's tiny and you're a big, strong, handsome man. But. She, bless your heart. Um, the handsome doesn't help the carrying. But... Um, uh, well, what's, what's great is that Kelly weighs five pounds. I mean, literally, I was like, please. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, am I okay? Mm -hmm. I, 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 my fingers weigh more than you do. So yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it was, it was fine. We didn't do that many times. But that whole scene, I have to be honest, was probably my favorite. Well, it's hard because the whole scene with the box was comedy. Yeah. So, you know, that was so much fun. Um, but And there's some stories. But... But that scene in the desert, we laughed and laughed and laughed, and we're like, we want this to be the buddy movie. This is it. This is <laughs> these are the these are the pictures. This is it. This is the gold mine. Uh, and the crew was loving it. We were all loving it. And Michelle, I think, tweeted tonight that there was such a fight to cut it for time and everything. But the crew, they were everyone loved it so much that they fought for it, which is awesome. Yes. It was pretty good. Was I also good. was glad that it was like, okay, it's not just let's teleport Pri and, and Zeph out into the Badlands. You right. needed some kind of journey, and obviously Zeph just got shot in the stomach. <laughs> it's like you have her hiking like 30 miles after being shot in the stomach. <laughs> you know, I'm like, sorry, keep going. You got to go. It's like, like we could have had the Blues Brothers moments. Like we got half a tank of gas, Zeph shot in the stomach, we were wearing sunglasses, and we are in the middle of the desert. <laughs> I loved it. And some of the people in the chat did as well. Erica Sally said that she loved this episode. There was so much going on, but it wasn't rushed or disruptive. Pre was his usual sassy self. That screech was priceless. Seeing Turin have a moment with Zeph was tense. Right. I'm genuinely uh, uh, curious because there's so many... This episode was straight up personality. Like with between Pre and Turin and Zeph, like you three together, I almost feel like they just rolled the cameras and say go with it. Was any of this improv? Uh, not, I mean, like little bits, but not really. The script was really that funny, that good. You know, it's about the screaming and how we did that. We did this whole scream like 80 different times. We just thought, really? Like we usually do two or three takes and it was like eight takes or something, <laughs> trying to get different angles and everything. Um, but, but that was all scripted. All of that was basically in there already. It was just so tight and funny. And how we did stuff was our own, of course, our own take on things. But, but uh, no, the, the writers are that good. They make it feel like it. Well, they've been writing for five years for us too, right? Yeah. So they know how we say things. You could tell that they are putting things in our mouths that really work. So we just kind of go, oh, just say it. Just don't get in the way. I kind of loved your couple goalness with Garrett and both of you sort of lying to keep the other one safe. I, I was like, oh my gosh, it was like that old fable where the woman cuts all her hair off and the man sells his precious watch they can buy each other a Christmas gift. I was like, oh, right. totally. <laughs> But it's like a comb and it's like a, something that helps the watch, right? Yes. Yeah, right. exactly, totally. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that, it's that, and missing each other to go, I love you and I'm doing this for you. And it's like, yeah, but we each screwed it up for each other, trying to do good for each other, which is a couple thing that happens all the time, right? Were you surprised that they decided to write in this this kind of uh, conflict between you and Garrett this this season? Because it seems like it was more of a choice to showcase you and him as opposed to something that was story related. Well, I was actually, but I was so thrilled. It was so you know we always love to get a little more more um, meat for your character and for the relationship they're in. But it was such a great time. We saw them so perfect. And because we had set up that Garrett was 
betraying me and I wasn't telling him. It, it, it was right story-wise for that little section of story because it's inevitable. They have to have the blow up to go, why, why didn't you trust me? It's like, oh, good, um, <laughs> right. You know, you have a bit of that moment. So, and, and then how it panned out and, and the fight was so great. And um, we did have to sort of stop for a moment when he flexed his muscles and that take and we all kind of broke up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and funny story. In that same scene, when he goes and grabs the bag, or is there, yeah, he grabs his bag to go. In one take, the crew who are just cheeky bastards, they filled his knapsack with the heaviest weight you could <laughs> imagine. And he swung it over like a trooper, but he said, I almost threw my back out. He was oh so big, God. he was like, oh, hey! God. And he oh, wow. finished up, I was like, what's happening? We finished the take, didn't say a word, and we finished, he was like, okay, you bastard. <laughs> And I was like, what? He, he took out the, the, the biggest like weights on set possible that were possible. He, they filled his sack with it, which was awesome. Oh my gosh, so cute. Yeah, laugh, 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 laugh. Was it was it? good. It was one of those days, heavy days emotionally. So we're like, let's just lighten it up a bit. It was good. Did you have to approach the script differently when you, when you knew that you were playing a character that was still in the same romantic relationship with somebody, but you guys have lost all memory? Like, how do you enter a scene into that having to forget all previous character development um it's weird i mean you sort of do some quick math in terms of okay what do we know what do we not know and then make up a very quick um new backstory you know what's the new story that i think i know about this person and and how we would have probably met up and still been attracted to each other like i just i love the inevitability of pre and garrett i love that even with you change the memories you erase a bunch of shit and guess what they're still gonna go together because that shit is too hot not to, not to happen. It is too hot. I love, love them together. Um, watching the show for five years, you living this character for five years, how hard is it for you to be saying goodbye and watching it with us every Friday in America? I guess we should oh, have this. Oh, in Canada too, it airs at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's, real sur it's surreal because we did it like a year ago. We finished filming. Um, so we knew it had happened and then it aired in the summertime. and. And we've been waiting and waiting for this season to come up, and it's exciting to be in the middle of it. I'm kind of in denial. I feel like it's—it doesn't seem real that we'll never revisit these characters again. I mean, who knows, Mark Wood, right? You know, but <laughs> hey. in the moment, anyway. I mean, you know, those Netflix uh, single movies. You know, they—they they come. It they could happen. Could happen. Say. Hey, Star Trek. I mean, you know, with the right persuasion, who'd have to speak with? Who, anyone? Anyone would have to just, uh, no? Okay, well, we'll see. Uh, so correct me, you if, never know. correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. story, story development wise, uh, we're led to believe that at the end of last episode, Garrett was the one that sold out Fancy, Pre, and Zeph. And uh, Pre and Zeph get away, Fancy gets grabbed. What's the intention behind Garrett selling them out? Uh, I don't know. Because that's I mean, we see more of it coming up. I I, I don't know. I mean, they, they don't, we're not privy to that necessarily. The information of the hows and whys. Um, I mean, certainly it's a it's an interesting way to in, fold Garrett into the mix of the drama of the show. Otherwise, he sort of remains uh, a decorative, muscly cherry mm -hmm. on the top, sort of thing. Um, so I'm sure that was part of it. But the actual bigger reason, not sure. But it does sort of include him in an active way. Otherwise, he'd sort of really be on the sidelines, kind of. You really wouldn't see him very much otherwise. Well, intention-wise, I'm more just curious, was Klein the one who directed him to do that, or did he see it going on and he took it upon himself to report them? I thought it was Klein. I, I think it's Klein that went to him. He had the idea that he'd be the easiest one to turn, obviously, for, you know, very sweet and well, naive cause, reasons. Because Klein's intention was take this transponder and replace it so Klein could spy on them and know that they were going in the right direction. But right. I actually, I feel like it was not at the behest of Klein, because Klein was too busy watching his daughter explode. I feel right. like Garrod was pulling a pre and trying to protect you by reporting you guys. Hmm. I just don't know. I don't know that Garrod, bless his heart, would be smart <laughs> enough to figure that out. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm just, he's not the guy who put the plans together, so I'm like, ooh. I love him, but not because of his intellect. <laughs> Other reasons, everybody. I mean, the character Other obviously reasons. is gathered as smart as hell, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can I can cut to that. Uh, let's let's uh, let's. You want to stay on the line for the for our whole episode discussion? 
Sure. Perfect. So I want to go ahead and move into our, our Klein update. We don't get much of Klein this episode, no. but he seemingly completely forgot about Anila because he only cares about Yala right now. Lady's <laughs> like, yo, you done grieving? And he's like, I don't care about anything Anyone. because I did it all for Yala. <laughs> I'm like, damn, she wasn't even your real daughter at first. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has a favorite child. <laughs> we don't want to say that, but he does. I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, Maybe he just knows that, like, Anila's safe in the cube outside of space somewhere, and he's not too worried about her. But, like, yeah, it feels like he just kind of forgot, because we only are learning secondhand through what he knows about Anila. We only learn that when Anila comes out of the cube, she says, Daddy sent me here. And we only, right. that's the only inclination we have that would assume that Klein knows that Anila is still alive. This scene makes me feel like he doesn't know that she's around, which would be interesting if there's like a different, if Klein doesn't even remember half the stuff that he's done based on being pulled out. Also, I can't help but wonder if it's the situation that he feels that she's able to take care of herself, but he knows that Dutch is on the ship and she's out of control she's going to be blown up and she needs his help right now and you know if you're in a cube and you're safe away then you're fine also she's immortal in holland still so <laughs> you might just not really be that worried about her she's good yeah she's okay i think yeah well, she's I mean, a combination of all those things i mean she's she's in that cube and he thinks that there's no reason to worry about her meanwhile dutch is getting you know blown to smithereens Dutch, I, I love the Dutch oven comment. That just reminded me of the Dutch oven comment earlier in the episode. Yeah, uh, such a delight. <laughs> uh, brainy brawn or my brawny brain. Um, I love the some lady bitch with a bad case of PMS. There was God. There were so many good lines this episode. Uh, so that's the Klein update. Klein actually Klein straight up tells the lady like I haven't done anything for you from the beginning. <laughs> like you kind of suck. I don't and care about you. I ain't gonna be your bitch no more. <laughs> And that's kind of how she left him. She's like, do, do you do you want a snack? Uh, it's, it's confusing. Loud when I saw that. Her, she is comedy in that scene. It's like snack. So yeah, tense. She, she's like Genius. being nice. She's like, I'm going to be motherly right now. But like, come on, like get so your bad. crap together. Like, <laughs> cut it out with the grieving. She needs him, but it's sort of weird. He's totally forgotten about his grandson. Because he oh, knows Jack. Jack is out. Yeah, but is Jack really his grandson? Does he view Jack that way? It's an extension of his beloved daughter. Okay. His other beloved daughter. I mean, we could get Grandpa Klein, but I think, like, Grandpa Klein kind of kills the lady game that he's got going on. He can be a silver fox, but once your grandpa status, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Klein's he gonna, can be. Klein's going to avoid that uh, gonna avoid that association. I've seen some grandpas, and I'm like, hey, you're so, a widow. So. Move it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Davin and Dutch. We get a really great scene after Johnny performs charades cunnilingus on Dutch. I love that. I blushed when I was watching that. So Bless. naughty. Poor Davin, just sitting back to back to the act, his back to the action. Uh, but we get just like we got Johnny and Dutch two episodes ago. We get uh, Davin and Dutch now, where he's worried about Johnny, but he basically explains the fact that the only reason him and Dutch are even connected is because of this chain link Johnny that brings them together, and he asked the question, do you want me to stay after Johnny goes? Because obviously they're all on team. Johnny's going to want to be a farmer at this point. Um, what do you think? Because we don't get the answer. I think Davin, when he came on the ship, is still sort of reeling from the change of the dynamics. And if it's just the two of them, it'll be a totally different dynamic. Sort of like people, when their kids go away to college, all of a sudden their kids aren't there anymore and they have to get to know each other all over again. What do you think, my beloved Tom? Yeah, I think you're actually you're on the right track there. You know, like, I mean, who have they been alone, really? It's always been Johnny there's buffer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Oh. I love you in that shirt. <laughs> Cherry, <laughs> keep it together. Keep it together. Hey. So moving on to Dutch and Johnny, uh, we don't get too much, but 
you know, it's just interesting to like see their character dynamic ever since they've been back on Team Bestie, which is great. So like that's what I like to see, and that's why I said this is like more reminiscent of a season one episode because the the dramatic points that we've had to kind of go over with these characters are sufficiently smoothed out at this point in the season that they can interact as they used to and not have all these weird mental and emotional walls between them. Right. So aside from Davin like being like, yo, like are we getting married, uh, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> we, 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 we get pretty natural killjoy moment. Uh, so the plans are, here are the plans. Team Awesome's plan, let's go to this museum that happens to have militainment, hijack the satellite feed, bounce it off the ar the artillery ship in the form of a microwave so they don't think anything of it, and use that to connect to Lucy's ship to bounce it off of Lucy in the Armada ship to be like, yo, let's cat scan this bitch. It was a lot of science. Yeah. A lot of okay. science, but I liked it. And I liked the military entertainment and I loved the interaction with them getting to know Calvert better. I thought it was interesting seeing Johnny interact not only with Calvert, but with the warden because there's like, a little bit of flirtation with the warden and then there's a little something between him and Calvert when they're fighting I thought there was tension and maybe there's a new thruple oh man no 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 thruples okay I we, like thruples. we already have pre fancy cherry and Davin and Johnny <laughs> Dutch we don't need Johnny warden Calvert like, that, well, I don't even know what that ship name would be. But I will say that it feels like the Warden is being set up to be Johnny's endgame. It is kind of like looking that way because she's been on a prison ship forever. And he's like a junk or two and wants to like make stuff. They're going to be like, we're going to make the coolest farm equipment in the quad. They're going to they're gonna found the riding mower. They're going to invent that. It hasn't been invented yet. They'll be riding something. I don't know if it's a motor, but hey. Wow. And we get the we get the side side it's note. Electric, so, um. Dutch and I'm uh, you blush. Dutch and Davin's uh, drunk history episode that we got today. <laughs> um, basically, the founding of Leith uh, that is completely untrue, and we get a little bit of a little bit of a Davin being upset with Johnny subconsciously when he calls the kid what you're just a farmer you're always going to just be a farmer and we're like oh man you're going to hate Johnny then <laughs> he was a little hard on that child but that child was a little too opinionated you right? stand there and be silent Precocious. child mm. oh yeah I do, I'm not big into precocious you children you stand there and get indoctrinated into what I tell you <laughs> this is America son <laughs> that, that was a very funny scene it made me laugh yeah so let's move on to the Warlord Pan, which is apparently just don't die. Yeah. Team, that's, if we can just do that, that's a great mission. Yeah, Team Warlord, don't die and try to not get tentacles on you from this thing that obviously just got shot out of its cage. Can I just yeah. say that if I was there, I would have immediately said I would fight for you and not do a mercy kill. Can I just say that about Can you believe way to kill me? I'm like, how did, how did we jump to that? How did we jump to that? She was Damn. quick. I mean, I'd hate to say it, but going by horror tropes, <laughs> you would die first in that room. Like, two quips be funny that would kill you. Just will care enough about you that kill you. Damn. Ouch. <laughs> I'd fight for you, though. Fight, too. Can I say why I little kid around a little longer? Come on. <laughs> fair. Fair. Our chat is, like, blowing up. They're like, yeah, don't die at all. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> I, no promises. We'll see. A few more episodes, you know. And Ivan Soto wants to clarify for everyone that calling a kid a farmer is not racist. Uh, that was... <laughs> Yes, that's very true. That was a required learning moment here today when we when we purged ourselves of our farming ignorance. Uh, so yeah, the warlord plan Turin's just like got it all in the bag. And the fact that Turin can like sneak into the factory and steal one of these cubes with one of the clones is like damn, he's he's kind of an asshole, but he's good at what he does. He's very right? good. Crack. Come on. He's a self appointed shithead. He says, Look, I'm always a <laughs> shithead, but He'll get the job done, and he throws Zeph into a room to make sure that he can lead them away. We what need the smart purple around. She's the smartest one, second to Johnny. Do you see Turin alive next episode, or do you see him going out in a blaze of glory? 
alive. Alive. I want everyone to survive. None of my Killjoys and my Killjoy team is to die. They're supposed to live and be happy forever and married. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a Garrett and pre-marriage at the end of the season finale. Well, we married at the end of season three. Yeah, they're but already married. But I want to see it again because they lost their memory. So it's like it didn't happen. So well, now we well, get a new yeah, wedding. We remember now. We might yeah. renew. Who knows? A big but renewal ceremony. I think it's more likely we see Warden and Johnny get married and then the Warden dies. And Johnny goes, oh, the curse of Jacoby. Black screen credits. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the series finale. I want Johnny to be alone, <laughs> Stephen. Come on. Just to end with Johnny. Just <laughs> <laughs> that's the ending of the show. What? No. Is it Sopranos? Yeah. What's happening? No, we don't want that. Johnny is the wedding. And then he like you see Aaron Ashmore run up. Wait, that's not me. That's my brother. And then you're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> You was a twin all along. <laughs> hey, she hasn't slept with Davin, so she'll be fine. Now, what's the bot story that you mentioned earlier? What's in the box? Seven mentions. You the said box. you had a funny story about the box. Sto- bo- oh, the just box the, the heaven that day was so. People were asking, like, what was in there? And it was literally there was a crew guy with, like, basically, imagine a riding crop with dreadlocks. Uh, <laughs> basically, in it, going. I love this. is all high tech stuff. And I was like, that's what we got a box with smoke and a guy with a puppet. And it was just thinking of, like, people thinking this thing is in there, whatever it is, but it was so kind of fabulously low tech and hilarious. Oh and then us laughing our ass up all day long. That's basically. What did you keep from the set? I know you uh, have something. I, I didn't keep a lot of set, some costume stuff that Trish uh, Baker, our amazing designer, um, I, I said I wanted you know an outfit, and she sent me like a bunch of things that I that were ama- are amazing. So I've got sort of a, a fabulous little package of things. Um, but nothing set wise. No, not really, but but costume stuff for sure. I want because pre stuff is so specifically spectacular. Oh my god, he was so stylish. Yeah, he was so stylish. It'd be great. Very lucky. We have. I, also, I love. I love dress up. I love like costume things too. So it was a part that had so much of my stuff all over it. <laughs> yeah. I I loved all the looks when you were a killjoy, when you're a bartender guy, when your hair is blonde, when you're a warlord. Your character was so stylish and you encapsulate. It felt like whenever you wore a different outfit, your personality changed so well from your from like the look on your face, not only like with your hair and stuff, but just like your demeanor would change. It was like I loved it. <laughs> Thank you for noticing that. It happened, you know what happened in season two, the right, we had so many different writers that were in there and and it, we got the, the, the okay so fast, they were writing really quickly and each writer would write pre a little differently. It was like, I, I noticed these, these sort of changes, I thought, oh, what am I gonna do with this? I thought, let me just commit to like exactly whatever is in that episode, that's the pre in that moment. And we started to dress him in these moods on purpose and it sort of carried through, you know, that your the writing sort of found its way again, of course, but, but uh, that that quality kind of stayed so we let him sort of play whatever he was that day and he was kind of a moody guy anyway so it kind of worked i think it worked it a lot work. really well because especially it's like you dress up as the warlord when you have to be the warlord you dress up as the rack agent when you have to be the rack agent you dress for the job you want not the job you have <laughs> totally that's totally <laughs> what we did and I was, we, we used to name some of the outfits it was like the superhero one and with, with the blood the blue streak was the superhero and we'd, we'd call it these names and that was sort of the theme of the feel of, of him pre that day gladiator was one outfit you know he dressed for whatever he needed to be to do what he needed to do that day how do you choose i don't know if like an actor of your status now still uses a reel to get work but like how do you choose what scenes to use from this show for your acting reel <laughs> You know, I let my agent do it. Okay, good call. Uh, yeah, yeah, and actually, the one who used to do it is now gone. I have to do the next one myself. Oh, damn it! I just realized that. <laughs> Shit. Um, but uh, yeah, so let her. Do, I send a bunch of things. Go this episode, that episode. I give her like a handful of episodes and go. I think these have the scenes, and then she, you know, cobbled it together. Do you think this kind of like leapfrogs you into a lot of other sci-fi series? Like, are we going to see you on Picard? Like. Where are we going next? <laughs> I, I would love it. I mean, I, this is my first, you know, sci-fi series. I'm so blown away by the fandom. Like, it's so more than any other genre. I think it's so like, comics and 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 sci-fi. It's so dedicated. It's so detailed. It's so um, lovingly uh, 
uh, just initiated. They're all everyone's so inside it. It's been really awesome. <laughs> they notice little performance things, and you know, and, and they, you, yeah, you guys, you notice all these things, and and your your conversations about the worlds that are created are so smart and forward thinking and creative that it's like it's been a, this strangely wonderful inspiration. Oh, so I, more for sure, I would love to do more more sci fi series. We have a question from the chat. Ivan Soto was wondering, when you got cast, did they let you know you were going to be on for this t long of a uh, character arc? Or were you the, the impression it was going to be like just a few episodes? I actually knew he'd be on most episodes because it was going to be the bar that they all came into all the time. I didn't know the nature of it. I thought, oh, great, I'll have a couple of days, you know, each episode <laughs> or a day or maybe once in a while. Um, but then as we went along, I guess people liked what was happening and, and I just saw myself getting, I was added into more stuff and they were finding more reasons to, and then to go to the bar or get me out of the bar or I'm a warlord. So there's a whole episode, <laughs> but you know, so I was just lucky. I was lucky. It's the right person, right time. And people liked it enough that they had me back for more. I'm kind of curious if, if you could look at the, look at the series as it is now. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing you could change, is there anything that you would change? Oh my God. Like a character uh, that you would not kill or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was sad to see Morgan go only because I love Morgan a lot and it was fun working with him. So I was really sad. I was surprised, I guess, maybe I shouldn't have been, but I was surprised when, when uh, um, oh my God, I just blanked. Uh, Potter, uh, Sarah, when Sarah was killed, oh, I was yeah. like, oh my God, wow, really? Uh, but I mean, then it became normal. Every every ninth episode, someone was killed. <laughs> Realize that like, every and literally, if you look back, it's every ninth episode someone is murdered, <laughs> or, or killed, or assassinated. Oh my I think gosh! Almost every year, if you look at it, it's always the ninth episode. Oh my god! Huh? Two episodes still pre dies. No, uh, I mean, <laughs> just yeah, <kidding>. right. <laughs> we'll see. There's a continue. But I was like, every ninth episode, I don't know. We like, talk to each other. I don't know, but who's it gonna be? I don't know, but someone's gonna die. Um. um but yeah, I mean, change. I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know. I would have just like. I would. I would have liked to see more pre involved in stuff because it can be so capable. Like, why wouldn't you use them for more? But that's just me wanting to be in more. Of course, that's, I'm a selfish cow that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but yeah, I, you know, who knows? Who knows? It made for some wild talks. I mean, I have to say, everything they did, I'd go, oh really? But I go, okay, sure, I get it. It got people talking. They loved it or hated it. You know, like, but people were a buzz about things. I mean, I, I'm so kind of blown away by Michelle's ideas, and then of course Adam and the writers as well. The things they come up with that were so clever that things I'd never even heard about. I mean, you hear about things that happen in, in sci-fi movies or TV shows, and you know, the internet's full of people talking. But there's some things that were so clever that I thought this is special. Like, there's something special about this person, in love Michelle, and and her world and what she does. That's just really unique. She kind of she she flips some stuff on its head that's been kind of delightful to watch and then of course be part of it in some cases you know like all of a sudden i had a husband we didn't see that coming <laughs> yeah i do yeah. like the I, it seems like the the writers of the show like to take risks in terms of like this hasn't been a thing done on tv before but like there's no rule that says it can't be done so like let's just do it like oh this character yeah we haven't given them a backstory so who says it can't be this backstory like we can throw that in if we haven't said anything to the to the opposite of that effect, then there's no reason not to. Right, so, exactly. I dig it. Uh, let's move on to, well, we mentioned Johnny and the Warden. Uh, let's move on to Calvert's backstory, because this is a character that we knew we'd be seeing more of, yes. or rather we had a feeling we'd be seeing more of. <laughs> right. And what do you think of the backstory they gave her and what Corrin Jeers had over her to get her to assass try to assassinate Sparlow? I thought it was interesting. I couldn't figure out what he was going to use to get her to assassinate. I didn't really have money, and she was self-sufficient enough where she didn't need their protection. And then turning her into a more sympathetic character, but still allowing her to be deadly and able to fight and being, you know, a soldier, I really liked that because it's not a traditional female character because normally like oh they kidnapped my child then she'd just cry and be broken down instead it just made her even stronger and more focused and i like that um it's a reminder that just because they're in superman's jail doesn't mean they want all of humanity to die or 
themselves to die. Like they like to be told what's going on. They know what's going on. Like she said, we know something's going on and you guys just aren't trusting and telling us. I know. And we know something's going on and we, for some reason, won't just trust Bodie the cannibal. <laughs> like <laughs> I was, I was really thinking like, Hey, this could, this guy could be a killjoy. As long as uh-huh. he... Kill joy, but you know. <laughs> he could be a he could be a an eat joy. He's a level seven. <laughs> oh, yeah, eat make, the person. Make that guy a Holland. He would have been a very happy Holland. <laughs> <laughs> hungry, hungry Hollands. Oh my god! <laughs> it's I'm a new s- game. Hungry, hungry Holland. <laughs> so we we go through him, but I love that Calvert. Uh, and I don't have it in front of me, but the actress who played Calvert did a great job of switching back and forth between when she was playing the role of the of the prisoner and playing the role of the normal person who's just trying to survive because that's what she is she's like look i'm not anything like that but she puts on that perception so she can stay there just like she stayed in the medical bay because Mm -hmm. that was safer than being out in the public area or in this case like she's acting crazy to let make them let their guard down so she can ditch them and go find her daughter we learn that she has a daughter who's 10 years old she's been in prison for eight years and she was set up on some level by them making basically making her appear to be a sociopath and mentally unstable so she's either a good actress or she actually is mentally unstable we'll <laughs> find out next week on uh, on killjoys um so i think they're really teeing her up to have like a happily ever after montage moment of her being a new killjoy like Ooh. she might be with davin dutch she might be the 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 third member of team awesome as, as johnny takes his year-long sabbatical the worst thing is Johnny's going to like take that year-long sabbatical and not find anything better, and then it's just like, let's kill Joy. Season six, let's go. <laughs> I want go. Fancy to okay. be part of the new team. Fancy. Well, let's, let's talk Fancy Feast. Oh, my God. Um, you guys are awesome. I want you guys to be friends in real life and hang out all the time. Uh, Sean and I? I mean, I think that's yes. actually like a, a true thing. Like, well, we totally, I've known Sean for years, yeah. So you guys we were friends best before friends. We, we actually got. We actually ended up in our fittings. We're on the first fittings on the same day, and it was like, "Are you in the show? Are you there? No way!" I, I got, we were so thrilled that each other got the show. He's great. He's a great guy. Always been a great guy. Wonderful actor. Sweetheart. So smart. He's he's great. Yeah. I want there to be a spinoff with you two in it playing um, detectives who is this sexual? Don't the... Is this sexual? Before you continue, is this sexual? No, they are rule breakers <laughs> that don't follow the rules, and <laughs> you're the one who likes to follow the rules, and Sean is the one that doesn't want to follow the rules, and somehow you guys are half brothers. <laughs> I love the half brother spin. That's great. That's nice. I like it. I like what, it. It's, it adds a level that like we can't get away from each other because you know. Yeah, because they're siblings. Makes us get along. You're attached at the hip. You actually have flesh that's attached. Twins. And you're Siamese twins attached to the hip, but half brothers. No, it's like Simon and Simon. <laughs> I get it. I just, I don't know. It's so left well, field. I think it would be funny. So Fancy. be fun. Fancy's got his face all mangled. Uh, they roughed him up a bit and he's hanging out. I seriously thought my prediction was coming true at the beginning of this episode. I'm like, oh my God, is he, is the lady really going to turn into Fancy? Are we going that way? <laughs> oh. And we're not. Uh. Unless we did, and this isn't the fancy we know at the end of the episode, but I think it is. It I think is we're safe fancy. to say it's our fancy. Uh, fancy basically wanders a ship that's supposed to be the most guarded and safe, safe, safe place for the lady ever, but there's no guards anywhere. He's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> I didn't know. Well, I could have assumed that Lucy sort of maneuvered it so that people are being called to different places. Like, that's smart. That's okay. That's what I figure. She's, she's maneuvered it so that they're always out of his way, and she's opening doors when it's safe in this place. She opens the door to come this way, come this way. That's why I kind of got from that. Well, the little alert that she was like sounding off yeah. sounded like too much like Prince. It was like she was playing <laughs> on Fancy's like love of Prince. Oh, what? <laughs> it's like, is Prince here? Oh, my God. Oh, what? I'm going to go down this hallway. Where's Prince? It was oh, such what? a Pied Piper. <laughs> Comedy. I don't know if I would have followed a Pied Piper. A strange sound. I don't know. But at least he found the box. You're like, I'll take anything I can get. Like, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's like, just get me the hell off this ship. I'm sick of being turned into things. He, we get season one or two at like at Red Seven or the at, on um, 
that moon, the sector oh, sector five, where he's like put in a pod and with a big thing needles put in oh, his neck, yes. black right. goo injected into him to turn Holland, and he walks into a hallway and just sees pods, and he's probably just thinking, not this again, God damn it! <laughs> Can we do this already? <laughs> like, let's not rehash season one right now. Y'all treated him terribly. You guys always made him feel like like he wasn't part of the team. Well, I didn't. I mean, we were always, we always got along in my bar. Yes. I mean, you know. Davin gave him a nice big hug. Oh, he did yeah. eventually, yes. Yeah. He said the little, little pretend bromance something at the end there, yes. <laughs> there's, there's something there. There's something there. They're going to shoot him again in another episode, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so, Fancy gets Lucy. Uh, Lucy backups her files because Noosey gets input in the ship and is like, yo, I'm going to just back up my files from offline databases that I realized. And we get Lucy back. Yay. Let me just say, I called it. I was like, there's no way they're getting rid of Lucy this way. If they're going to get rid of Lucy this way, they're going to blow that ship the F up. <laughs> that is the only way Lucy is going out of this series. But now Johnny and Lucy have a baby together because apparently Lucy is still a little around, I guess. She's I guess. like a little backup. It's got Johnny's eyes. I like Noosey. Noosey's like all Noosey. comedy. Funny. So I think Noosey's going to be on the uh, the prison ship, and Noosey's going to be the warden's AI, and then Lucy's going to be Johnny's AI, and they're going to have double dates together, and that's going to be like... <laughs> that's the thing. That's okay. how relationships work in, in the quad. How come when you say that they're going to have a relationship, it's all good and cheddar, and when <laughs> I say we're having a relationship, then I'm terrible. Because you can't cheat on an AI with another AI. You can have as many sex toys as you want. I don't know how many sex <laughs> toys you have, but this conversation is making me feel <laughs> like, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> In the future, <laughs> when sex, box t sex bots turn into entire prison ships, <laughs> welcome to Killjoys. <laughs> oh, Steven, Steven. Oh, That's the new series right there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pick up where we take off. Everyone in the chat says no with multiple explanation points. So I believe that if fans want to support this show, they can go to iTunes, give us a rating and a comment and a subscription. If you go there and find Killjoys by searching Killjoys Reviews or searching Killjoys under podcasts on Apple Podcasts, you can find the AfterBuzz TV Killjoys After Show and leave us a rating and comment to get a shout out on the show. Uh, the most recent rating and comment we have is from Cherry. <laughs> who says, thanks everyone for listening to our Killjoys After Buzz TV podcast for the final season. I'm so excited to join the panel. Super excited that we have guests for the final episodes and hope you're all enjoying listening. Please subscribe and get reminders and get ready for Sean back joining our panel for Three Mutineers, which was last week. But we need more because we need to shout you guys out more. Yes. And we have, ba -ba -da -ba, we have special guests next episode as well. We have Zeph next week. Kelly McCormick on the show next week, who she doesn't need any kind of weird misogynistic pickup. She needs a warlord hug. Yes. And I mean, I, who doesn't? Right? I totally want my own pre to be my best friend forever. We're, I'm so sad that you live in Canada. Well, you know, who knows? Time to change. Well, I you, travel. When you come down to Comic Con and you're you're charging for signatures and charging for Warlord hugs, <laughs> we'll get to see you. So, do we have any news and gossip, Miss Cherry? Well, Davis? someone is going to be starting their new season for the third year of the your all-time classic hit parade, which moves to Fridays at 10 p.m. ET, 7 p.m. PT, which I think is in Canada, starting September sets as your new season. Yeah. Where you get to sing. Yeah. Man, yeah, this crazy singing show I've been doing for the past couple of years. It's sort of one of those fluky things that, oh, sure, we'll try a few episodes, see what goes. <laughs> Big hit, season three, here we are. Wow. That's pretty yeah. awesome. I don't cool. suppose you want to sing a little bit for us. Oh, Cherry, putting him on the spot. Um, uh, I love singing. I, I, I don't want to sing. I was, you were asking that question, my mind was blank. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I know that we've been talking about making a recording of, um, how's it go? 
I am a poor wayfaring stranger. Oh, uh, something, something. <laughs> it's a long, it's a year or more. I think we need American Pie, except it's the day that Potter died. I think that's uh, that's how we're gonna. Your voice is so beautiful, but of course you've been on stage and you're trained, so of course you're a Renaissance man that can do it all. <laughs> Less. Cherry's building your dating profile right here. Right? I'll send the check when we're done. You can e-transfer. That would be great. I'm going to steal that. I'm, my Tinder profile is now going to say a renaissance man. Renaissance man. I think that's yeah. that's what it needs. Uh, do we have predictions? Yes, I do. So, let's get into it. Cherry, and what are your predictions? TV. For Killjoy Season 5, Episode 8, it is going to be entitled, Don't Stop Be Weaving. Well, I believe in all of you, and I think the whole team's going to be together on the ship. They're going to be plotting and scheming to take down the lady, and that um, Pri and Garrett will be hugging, and everyone will have to show respect to Fancy, which they haven't been showing to him as much as I would like, and... Davin's going to have a little bit of weird jealousy about Johnny because Johnny and Dutch like to mess with him by doing insinuating sexual things. I mean, I think Johnny's going to be in a great mood next week. I mean, he he's figured out his emotional stuff with Dutch. Lucy's back and not dead. Um, the only thing that could come, throw a wrench in that plan is if the lady can bring back people from the dead and if we see Potter or something. Like, for a split second this episode, the person coming down the stairs to shoot at Zef and uh, and... Turin, mm -hmm. I definitely thought it was going to be like Pip for a second and the lady could like turn people from the Hullen, but then they didn't go that route. So I was like, okay, thank God. So we're not bringing people back from the dead. Next episode, I think we're going to see something bad happen to Turin, but he's not going to die. And I think that either Garrett or Pri are going to be put in a really bad position. Ooh, no. Not death related, but like a bad position. No. And Klein's going to have contact with Anila. That's what I'll go with. But okay. we got That's cool. eight, nine, ten. We got three more episodes. No. Three more episodes. And we will be seeing you for hopefully all three of those episodes, Tom. Thank you so much for coming thank on the you, show. Tom. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you, guys. Always a good time. Always. Uh, where sure. can the fans find you if they want to keep in touch? Uh, Instagram. I think it's Tom Allison. Some version of Tom Allison or with a slash or something. And uh, Twitter. Also Tom Allison. And then my website, www.tomallison, T-H-O-M, <laughs> dot com. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tom, and we will talk to you soon. You got it. Bye, Tom. All right, guys. So without further ado, we'll have to start rolling that credits music because we are out of time. No. We are out of time. We are like any of Johnny's love interests one episode after they have had sex with him. <laughs> also, Potter's death was pretty terrible. Oh, I thought Pip's death was terrible. I miss Pip's death. I mean, Pip, like, died doing something. Potter just kind of, like, bled from all over orifices and died. Like, Ugh. pretty terrible. Um, where can we find you, Cherry? Cherry underscore LA on Twitter and Instagram. And Sunday nights after this, I normally do Pennyworth. Oh, wait. Ivan Soto points out a great point. Hmm? Potter died because Kendry killed her right in the bar. Yes. So it wasn't her bleeding from her orifices that time. It was Kendry. And then obviously we're going to have to deal with that baggage next time Johnny sees Kendry. I know. He'll be mad. Womp womp. Big mad. Potter got potted. I Thank don't know. You, Ivan. Guys, you can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux. And of course, here at AfterBuzz TV, doing all the after shows for all of the TV series that you love and love to love. I also produce Marie Menounis' podcast, Better Together, which if you want to shout out on, you can also go give a Apple podcast review and rating to that, which is great. It's all about helping people and making sure that we're all getting better together. I produce that every Monday, so there's a new episode coming out tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning into the Killjoys After Show here at AfterBuzz TV. We will see you next week. Same Killjoys time same killjoy's place because we're just a wandering wayfarer stranger <laughs> our Hi. founder kevin undergaro and me maria menounos would like to thank you for tuning in to after buzz tv remember we're not just the first we're the biggest in the world and we're the only destination for all your favorite tv shows whatever you crave we've got it so go to afterbuzztv.com and check out our lineup buzz you later <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 